now with Reaction. He's a nationally syndicated radio talk show host. I call him the great one. Mark Levin is back with us. Mark, good to see you, sir. Um, I want to put up on the screen, Mark, the comments Hi, made by Rudy Giuliani. I, I just outlined the differences. He said, I do not believe, and I know this is a horrible thing to have to say, but I do not believe this president loves America. Then he went on to explain what he meant about the apology tour, uh, not believing in American exceptionalism and talking about it the way, say, Ronald Reagan or even Bill Clinton used to, uh, talking about his background with Frank Marshall Davis and, and Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn and Reverend Wright, etc., um, denying American exceptionalism. What is your reaction to that? Well, Rudy is exactly right. And I would add, and I've said this many years on my radio program, when somebody says they want to fundamentally transform America, well, then you must not love America. It's like saying, I'm going to fundamentally transform my wife or my girlfriend. That means you must not love your wife or your girlfriend. And Obama has shown no indication that he loves the Constitution. He never talks about capitalism. He's always bringing up the past. He's always picking at scabs, even now. He's a patsy for Islamic terrorism. Half of his speeches are about how terrible America is, and America shouldn't react in a negative way. I want to remind this president, he likes to bring up Jesus in a certain context, and I say this as a Jew. You know, there's an awful lot of Christians uh, in America and in Europe who have died, who have been maimed, who have been harmed, uh, trying to defend innocent uh, peace-loving Muslims in the Middle East, in Afghanistan, and so forth. And it would be nice every now and then if he would acknowledge that. And I would also say this man is the most preposterous and absurd president, maybe modern American history, maybe any time in American history. And here's the sad fact. The sad fact is, because of what he's doing or not doing, it's going to be left to the next president to deal with this, and it's going to be much worse. The genocide, much more widespread. They're going to have much more geography, much more resources, because this guy's not going to do it for whatever reason. He is not up to the task. Let me, and let Sean, me, I want to say something. Yeah, go ahead. He is no fan. Def, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I, I was going to say, go he's no defender of Muslims. And Muslims are being slaughtered all over the Middle East, they're being slaughtered. In Africa, along with Christians, along with non-believers in a certain sect of, uh, of Islam, this man is not defending them. It's, it's those of us who speak out and who are insisting that we take effective military steps to put an end to this. We're the ones speaking out for Muslims and so forth. Well, so, and and for, the whim, for women's rights. You know, people could, could go after conservatives. They don't support gay marriage, but they're standing up. Uh, against the killing of gays and lesbians. Uh, they're standing up for women's rights who can't drive, leave their home without a uh, relative that's male, or the horrible treatment of women under Sharia. You know, but I want to, it's almost pathological at this point. There's a cognitive dissonance that we're discussing here because the president steadfastly refuses to say radical Islam, acknowledge the enemy, radical Islamists. But he has no problem talking about terrible deeds in the, in the name of Jesus. Joe Biden went out there today talking about terrorism in the name of the Bible. Uh, they invited a radical to this summit, a guy that suggested that maybe we should look at Israel as a possible uh, co-conspirator. What happened on 9-11? There's something deeper here. It's because, I can't quite put my finger on it. What do you think it is? Well, I think Obama is a religious and historical illiterate. I think he really does have contempt for this country. Uh, he has contempt for our military. He's demonstrated that. And uh, Rudy's exactly right. And you had mentioned this early on. Who did he hang out with? He hang out with this guy Khalidi, who was a mouthpiece for Arafat. He hang out with uh, Dorn and Ayers. Who are they? Domestic terrorists. I can go down the list. He's exactly right, Rudy. His great mentor was a well-known Soviet communist uh, sympathizer in Hawaii. Uh, his father, the same thing. And so uh, this, this is who uh, uh, indoctrinated Obama. He doesn't think like us. He doesn't react uh, uh, the way we do. But I do want to do one thing to remind people what we're really talking about here. Obama, as I said, is a patsy for Islamic terrorism the way Chamberlain was a patsy for the Third Reich. And this won't take long. I want to just a couple of sentences from Anne Frank's diary. Because you know, Sean, this is a war really on little girls and women. That's what's taking place, the brutalization in front of our faces. Anne Frank said in 1944 in her diary, I've reached the point 
where I can hardly care whether I live or die. The world will keep on turning without me, and I can't do anything to change events anyway. I'll just let matters take their course and concentrate on studying and hope that everything will be all right in the end. And then shortly later she wrote, but the minute I was alone, I knew I was going to cry my eyes out. I slid to the floor in my nightgown and began by saying my prayers very fervently. Then I drew my knees to my chest, lay my head on my arms and cried, all huddled up on the bare floor. And then a loud sob brought me back to earth. Mr. President, Mr. President, there are tens of thousands of Anne Franks right now being brutalized. Why don't you do something about it? Why don't you, why don't you uh, demonstrate that you're a leader, you're the commander in chief, and let's take care of business? I don't think it's going to happen under this man. Mark Levin, thank you for being with us.